So if you've been following along in my videos, you saw in the last video, I was on the side of the road. Well, not really on the side of the road. I was in a gas station parking lot. Uh, I was on the freeway, blew an oil line. Uh, it was the one I repaired, the clamp that I installed, the crimp clamp with the double crimp clamp with the hook that hooks around the, the um, raised part of the metal part of the oil line uh, failed and it slipped off or blew the hose off and um, we lost oil pressure. So um, there's part of the clamp there. Uh, the They were not leaking. Um, so no, no signs whatsoever that there was going to be an issue. It just uh, catastrophically blew off and I lost oil pressure so not good well let's see yep nothing touches so you know when that thing blew off this thing pumps a lot of oil and I'm sure it was just a garden hose stream of oil so let's look I got the, um, you know I heard the valves clattering Let's look at the camshaft, see if we see any scoring. I do not see any scoring. It still looks a little oily. Not too bad. That's a good sign. Um, I just did an oil change on this thing a couple hundred miles ago. And I put uh, liquid Molly MOS2 truck oil additive. It's got the molybdenum molybdenum or however you pronounce it and you tell me how you pronounce it friction modifier it's supposed to be really good stuff so i've never used it before but man if i was ever gonna try using that stuff i picked the right time to put it in this engine because uh you know that may have saved this engine if if it's not toast uh if we did save it you know we won't know if that was what saved it or if it would have been saved anyway but um definitely feel better knowing that stuff was in there so um uh, in fact you know they they the molybdenum they created for um uh, airplane engines so that um if they lost oil pressure they could keep running for a while so they could land so they could safely land so like I said, a good time to add it to this engine. So we're gonna get this washer fluid bottle out of the way. I'm not gonna film this. I'm just gonna try to get those clamps on there. There's, y'all aren't gonna be able to see down there anyway while I'm trying to do this. And the whole engine is completely oily. Um, and I, I will pressure wash this thing after I get the oil line back on. I don't wanna end up getting water in it. So, um, so I'm gonna have to do this real messy and I don't want to get oil all over the camera. So let me see if I can get this thing hooked up. All right, and I guess now is when we see how much oil it lost. Like I said, I've only got one gallon here. I have no idea if this, I know when these engines are cold, they bypass the oil cooler. In other words, you know, it's got some kind of little thermostat on the oil cooler line. I think it's in the, therm I think it's in the oil filter housing where it, um, if the engine's cold, or if the oil's cold, it does not send oil through the oil cooler. But once it's warmed up, I think it's all flow through the oil cooler. I don't really know, but um, so I have no idea that if, say, for instance, if we didn't lose all of our oil did it still have oil flow to the engine? And I don't think it did, um, or I don't think it would. I think if you lose an oil cooler line, you're losing all oil pressure to the engine. But we will see if it ran long enough to pump two gallons of oil out of the engine. And I will not crank it up until we've got it topped off. I'm going to assume that the oil cooler is drained of all of its oil. And so it will probably go down a quart once we crank it up. That's one gallon in. Let's see what we got. Be nice if it touch. Oh, look. 
we touch. So, I kind of think we're probably at about the two quart mark. I'm gonna guess it pretty much lost all of its oil. Um, let me get some oil and then we will uh, we'll top it off and crank it up. Went out to the shop and grabbed another thing of oil. This one's partially used and it does not have a, a marker on it to show how much is in it. So I'm gonna guess there's at least a gallon and a half. This is a two gallon thing, at least a gallon and a half in here. So I'm not gonna know for sure how much thing, how much this thing holds. I guess I could pour it into that bottle and, but at this point we know it pretty much lost all of its oil. Um, so um, let's, forgot to show y'all the repair and we just kind of went through all of our sheets recently and this one had a rip in it. It's one of my sons. And of course my wife asked if I wanted it for the shop and I was like, sure. And it's a good thing to lay on right now because the ground is wet. And there's our repair. Like I said, this is temporary just to make sure this engine's still good. Before we go to the trouble of replacing that oil line, and as you can see, it is oily everywhere under here. It made a mess all the way to the back of the car. It is everywhere. It's all on that wheel. You can see where that's oil that's run down. And there's a frog. He did not come out of the oil line. And even over there, that's oil. I mean, this thing did not really have any leaks. And it is just covered in oil. You can see all the water beating up on it. And all down the side of the car. You see, well, can't really see now, but you could see oil all down it. Looks like the rain has washed away a lot of it, but it had a mist of oil all the way down the side of the car. You can see back here, that rim is nice and oily. This thing is gonna have to get a good pressure washing with some degreaser. So let's uh, finish topping it off. Kind of am curious how much oil it's in. Scott. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and uh, fill this thing up to the three quart line with my funnel, and we'll fill the engine with this, so we can kind of keep track of how much oil it did lose. Wasn't gonna do that, but yeah, it's got me curious if it pumped out all the oil or not. And it'll just take a second to do that. So let me do that. I can't film and do it. Let me do that and then we'll fill the engine with this so we can see how much it takes. All right, as you can see, we've got about eh, a little above half a quart left in there. I filled it up to a three-fourths mark or three-quart mark. So we've got about, mm, about seven and a half quarts in it. So it, I'm gonna say it was empty. Um, and it may just be a little bit overfilled at the moment. Yeah, it's a little overfilled. But, like I said, that oil cooler is drained. And so when we start it up, it is going to drop. So, let's get our stuff out of the way. I'm going to leave our funnel right there. It's got a rag under it. It's kind of draining. And I'm going to do something here. We're gonna to try to build up a little oil pressure before it starts. We're gonna unplug the glow plugs. Uh, let's see. Put the one. No. This one. We're gonna unplug the glow plugs. And uh, it'll crank without the glow plugs. I mean, it'll start without the glow plugs, but it will be a long crank before it starts, or a longer crank. And that will allow us maybe to build up a little bit of oil pressure before it starts. So let's see. May not crank it out the 
club plugs. Now we've built up some more pressure. It wants glow plugs. But we built up oil pressure, which is what I wanted. Didn't sound bad cranking it over. And so we know when it starts, we should have oil pressure. Got glow plugs. Y'all keep an eye on oil pressure. It's coming up pegged out on oil pressure. Once it's warmed up, it'll it'll drop a little bit. I'm trying to think of the different scenarios, but when you're driving it and it's got a little bit of RPM, it's always pegged. confident it was okay I was confident enough that I ordered two motor mounts for it uh, so that when we put the uh, when we replace the oil line we're gonna put new motor mounts on it and uh, I put motor mounts on it a while back but they are crappy quality and the engine let's see when I replaced it the passenger side one it was collapsed the driver's side one was still good and when I put these in it, they almost immediately collapsed a little bit, and that's why I've got a hose clamp. You can see right there, it's a hose clamp from that upper oil line as a protection to make sure that that, because it's, it's pretty close to that power steering pump. And honestly, I thought, when I lost oil pressure, I thought that's what happened, is that it, that hose cut through that upper oil line. But it did not, and like I said, I put that clamp on it to help keep from keep that from happening. You know, it, it's right in line with that power steering belt, and if it ever did drop or or shake over, and it would uh, rub against that clamp instead of the rubber hose, that was the purpose of that. So these motor mounts are crap. Don't buy these. I ordered some new ones. Uh, should be good quality. And when we pick the engine up to do the uh, oil line, we will uh, put two new motor mounts on it again. Hopefully these will be better. The engine sounds good to me.
or belts, two of them. Let's tighten those up. Let's see. I'm gonna put it in gear. Turn the AC on. Get the engine loaded down. And we're still pegged out on oil pressure. I think our engine's good. So, liquid Molly MLS2 with molybdenum. Did it save this engine? I don't know, but I can tell you what. I'm gonna put another. I'm gonna order another uh, bottle of it. And since we drained, we drank, we lost all of our oil. I'm gonna put another bottle of it in there. And uh, from now on, it's going in this engine uh, because uh, I don't know if it saved it, but it definitely didn't hurt. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment down below. Hit the like button and subscribe for more. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut this thing off. I don't, I don't trust that. I know a lot of people uh, clamp those lines like that. I don't trust it. And uh, so we're gonna limit how much we run it until we uh, replace this oil line.